You already know the drill. I ain't even gotta say it. Today is a Subaru type of day, which I'm excited for. Now we're not gonna be just working on Gary. We're also gonna be working on the Hawkeye a little bit. So enough of the Evos for today. A Subaru day it is. First thing we're doing this morning is dropping the 07 STI off for a tent job. As you guys can see, this rear window, it's like a reddish tint on it, all bubbled up, and the rest of the car not tinted whatsoever. I've been needing to get this done for quite a while, so I'm very, very excited. I haven't had a car tinted in so long. I think the last car I had tinted was the M3. And that had to have been a had to have been at least a year ago. So we just made it to Chandler's new spot, Outlaw Auto Pros. He's gonna be taking care of the tent on this thing and I am freaking excited, man. Fish bowls look good on some cars, but I think tent is gonna look so much better on this one. They said just that rear window tint that's all red is gonna take a couple hours to remove. So I'm gonna head back to the shop and get working on Gary. It's gonna be a nice, quick and easy day on Gary here. I need to get it cleaned up. It's in dire need of an oil change and we have a really, really bad exhaust rattle. Well, we'll have to get it, get it up in the air for that. And last but not least, the most annoying problem that is quite literally the easiest thing in the world to fix, the license plate bulbs are non-stop flickering on this car and I have new ones here. Let's get this thing up in the air, do a good inspection underneath. It looks like we have a broken motor mount and I think she has a little bit of an oil leak as well. This thing needs a little bit more love than I expected. So we have the case of a broken motor mount right there. So that right there is supposed to be sitting underneath. You see where it's rusty? That's where it's supposed to sit. And then we have a little bit of an oil leak coming from one of the cam seals. I don't think I'm gonna take care of that today just because the whole timing kit and cam gears have to come off. But I have noticed a little bit of a drip on the driveway. But nonetheless, let's go ahead and get this oil changed. We can get the motor mount swapped. And I thought it was an exhaust rattle, but it's definitely just that motor mount that's making all the noise. Boy, it looks like it hasn't been changed in a couple of, a couple of minutes but it's clean. Let's do the thing. Cars that are making this much power all the time. I always like to cut the filters. Something like the, you know, the M3, I guess, or the NSX or stockish cars, no need. But for the built to the hilt cars, it's better to catch the issues before they become a big issue. Oh yes, look at that. Clean as could freaking be. Nothing funny there. Nothing funny in here. I like it. All right, so a couple things need to happen for the timing covers to come off. I'll pull just the covers for now and kind of go from there. I'm assuming it's a cam seal, but I could be wrong. So first up, our nice JDC alternator cover comes off and then the alternator needs to be loosened so that we can get the alternator belt off and now the crank pulley Let's see if I can bust this loose myself I have the car in sixth gear with the e-brake on and she's coming loose not bad oh yeah definitely a little bit of oil inside this passenger side timing cover. Also, it's a little 
Funny, all the blue off of the gate's race belt after a couple thousand miles, it just wears off and gets all over your timing covers. It's a bit hard to tell exactly what cam seal's leaking. There's just not much space down there. And I don't really care to pull the radiator. I'm just gonna go ahead. At this point, it's either a cam seal or the valve cover. They both kinda are in that same area over there. I have a feeling it's a cam seal, so I'm gonna go ahead, pop the timing belt and both of these cam gears off and we should be able to tell from there. Easiest to break loose the cam gear bolt. Before pulling the timing belt, the timing belt kind of holds everything together. Ah, there we go. Timing belt is off, still in perfect condition. It is not the upper seal, or I guess you'd call it the intake seal. I know it's on the passenger side. Hopefully, it's the exhaust cam seal that's leaking. Really? Okay. Well, cam seals are fine. They're not leaking. Annoying. When a cam seal leaks, it's very easy to see on the back of the cam gear, it'll be wet. Dry, dry, dry. So what was actually leaking was the cam holder, the front. It seals to the head right there. It's kind of hard to see, but that was leaking a bit. So I got that resealed, brand new cam seals, new valve cover seal or valve cover gasket. Now we need to go ahead and get this thing retimed, get the timing cover back on, and we can take care of that broken motor mount. I tell you what, man, timing a Subaru motor, especially in the car, is probably one of the least fun motors to time. It ain't like a, you know, an Evo where you have two camshafts to deal with. In this case, we got four. So yeah. Not fun, but it's doable. The driver side cams need to be rotated. Thankfully, the passenger side cams, they will line up with the timing marks just fine. So get it on the passenger side cam shafts first, and then, this is easier if you got two people, but I don't have two people, I got one people. You need two 10 millimeter Ellens to rotate the exhaust and intake cam shafts on the driver's side. I'm gonna use a pair of vice grips, very, very, very lightly clamped down, just so on the intake gear, the timing belt doesn't keep falling off and I can go move on to the exhaust. Light pressure, don't wanna hurt the belt. Okay, lined up there, lined up there. Crankshaft good, intake passenger good, exhaust passenger good. Now, the last pulley we wanna install is on the passenger side, lower. It's the last pulley to get on, and then we'll pull the pin on the tensioner, and it's timed. Like I said, is it fun? Not at all. But is it doable? Kind of. She's fully timed. Pull the pin. Voila, let's crank her over by hand and make sure it stays in time. Alrighty, we're good to go. We are good to go. This thing's officially back together. Let's fire her up and make sure everything's good to go. Throttle body was not opening, throwing codes for the throttle body. After reprogramming, it appears it should be fine now. Ma'am, it is. Perfect. Should be good to go. So this is what a quick maintenance day looks like on a STI. You try the whole car apart for maintenance, pretty much. It's completely different with the new motor mount. I don't know how long that motor mount was broken for. It definitely happened on a launch. At least that's what I'm suspecting.
finished up, good to go, runs absolutely amazing. All issues are resolved. Just got a call that the Hawkeye is done. So I gotta go swing by and pick that thing up. I'm excited to see how that looks with all the new tint that's on it. Tint is all finished up on the Hawkeye. This thing looks so freaking good. I keep trying to convince myself that maybe fish bowl is the way to go, more specifically on the Evo, but then every single time I tint a car, it looks so much freaking better. Well, boys, I was planning on getting way more done today, but of course, Gary took my whole entire day. Sometimes that is just how it goes. So I'm gonna wrap it up right here. I hope you guys enjoyed. Big, 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 Thank you to Outlaw Auto Pros for getting the tint knocked out on the STI. I'll go ahead and have them linked down in the description box below. They did a phenomenal job. This thing turned out so good, especially for how nasty the rear window was before. It looks perfect. Now, unfortunately, the windshield's cracked, so I gotta get a new windshield, and then I probably will get the windshield tinted very, very lightly as well, but it's gotta be replaced first.